Hey pals, so if you tried a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet or even intermittent fasting as a means to improve your blood sugar, but you aren't noticing changes, in this video I hope to kind of unpack some new science that's showing that diabetes is not this uniform disease, that there's different subtypes and different what's called etiologies or ways in which we can get diabetes, and that perhaps just by you fasting, if you didn't notice any changes in blood sugar, maybe that wasn't the best approach to specifically improve your unique blood sugar problem. So I wanna welcome you back. It's Mike Mutzel, super grateful and excited that you're here. If at any point you enjoy this content, please hit that like button and I love to hear from you. So please comment below and so that we can create this dialogue and this conversation because again, friends, what I see on the internet and why I have this channel is because I see so much binary thinking. You either have diabetes or you don't. You either have prediabetes or you don't or you're normal glycemic or not. And what we're seeing now with all the different data that we have and uh, Leif Group and colleagues, and I'll highlight a study right here, actually showed that there's five different subtypes of type 2 diabetes. You might be thinking, what do you mean five subtypes? So let me just read them off to you again. I'll highlight the study here. Uh, but there's this idea of precision medicine where we now know the proteomics, which is looking at proteinaceous and protein uh, metabolites in the blood. We have metabolomics, which is looking at different metabolites in the blood. And we have epigenetics. And so Using kind of these three different variables, we can better get a gauge about what's going on if, and if we look under the hood metabolically with people. And so this idea that, that there's different forms of diabetes. And I, I want to provide this video not to add confusion to you because you're probably trying to do the best things that you can to improve your health. But when something's not working, I like to make videos to give people a new idea, a source of inspiration to, to you know, uh, modulate their diet or lifestyle. And I hear from many clients that they went keto, went carnivore, but their blood sugar is actually rising and they're confused. And so I, I wanted to give you an idea about this video. Now, let me just break down the different subtypes and we can talk about what this means in the take home message here. Okay, again, most people think you have diabetes or you don't, right? If you have a fasting glucose over 125 or a post meal glucose, I think it's over 200, then you have diabetes or you might. And then you'll get recommended by your internal medicine or family medicine doctor to do a glucose tolerance test to diagnose uh, type 2 diabetes. But what we're finding, and this is what you know, these data-driven scientists uh, have looked at, is we have severe insulin deficient diabetes. So this would be like pancreatic beta cells are infiltrated with fat. There's been so much hyperinsulinemia for a while that the beta cells basically are exhausted. So we have basically no insulin, so blood sugar is running amok. Uh, and then we have severe insulin resistant diabetes. So this would be, there's so much maybe fat infiltration in the liver, in the adipose, in the skeletal muscle, that there's the GLUT4 mechanism and the mechanism through which, you know, the pancreas releases insulin to, as a means to drive down glucose is just not working. There's so much insulin resistance. So this could be due from being too sedentary, lack of exercise, things like that. So again, if you change your diet but haven't affected your exercise, this could really help. There's a lot of good research emerging there. Uh, the third cause could be mild obesity-related diabetes, and we'll get into that in another video because it's a lot to unpack. But suffice it to say, the kind of adipocytokines that are released from fat tissue when one gets overweight can cause insulin resistance, and the associated inflammation stemming from the fat tissue that are overfilled with fat then drive insulin resistance. So it's that adipose tissue and excess of that can be at the cause of diabetes. So we've already kind of unpacked three, where we have over fat infiltration in the pancreas, where the pancreas can no longer release insulin as a cause. We, we talked about the severe insulin resistance, whereas the skeletal muscle, the liver, the fat cells, you know, that could be one cause. And now we're talking about, you know, the, the, the obesity related uh, inflammation that is causing uh, issues. And so the fourth is mild age-related diabetes. So this is, again, I, I don't want to, this could be a whole nother video, but as we age, we get more inflamed. It's called inflammaging, okay? This, this is a medical term. I'm not making this stuff up. Scientists have talked about this. So if you take your baseline level of inflammation when you're 20, you eat a healthy, good diet, even if you're at 60, your static background inflammation is going to increase. Inflammation antagonizes insulin signaling. Again, so we have multiple ways to go about this. And so I just wanted to provide this video, again, not to confuse you, not to throw unnecessarily, you know, more scientific jargon in your brain. I want you to realize that if things aren't working, 
for you, your client, someone that you know about, and they've been following the same protocol that worked for someone else, this is where we can take a more precision and customizable approach to this and figure out, okay, well, let's take a step back. Am I older than Sally Smith, who's doing the same diet as I am, but experiencing different results? Do I have more body fat? Do I have less lean muscle mass? Do I have more background inflammation? All of these things. And so it's not just about a so-called low carb diet. It's not just about fasting. There's other factors going on here. And so I just wanted to make this video to get you to think a little bit differently about how everything is connected. Your immune system is connected to your metabolism. When you have inflammation, you're going to have insulin resistance. When you have insulin resistance, you're going to have you know, issues within your immune system. It goes both ways. If you have excessive body fat, that could be driving some of the issues with diabetes. So I just wanted to provide this video. I'm sure we're going to be hearing more about this in the, the days and years to come as precision medicine kind of you know, becomes more centralized and talked about. Um, as, as a means to be more precise and individual and personalized uh, in the context of medicine. So I'll put links below. Again, hopefully you enjoyed this video and learned a little something. I'm not trying to confuse you at all. Uh, let me know what you think about this concept and if we should unpack this more because there's a lot of scientists that are now driving uh, and, and citing this, this uh, individual research paper. So I uh, appreciate you tuning all the way to the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and we'll catch you on a future one down the road. Bye guys.